This episode of Science Max is all about building things strong. Two. And let's do three. An arched bridge, giant house of cards, magical stacking books, and more. Oh, I thought they were going to do it. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Oh, hello, Science Maximites. We've got a lot of work today, so I was just getting prepared. You know, taking something flimsy and making it strong, that's what scientists and engineers do every day. And it's also pretty fun. You take something that's not that strong, and by the way you build it or put it together or change its shape, it suddenly becomes a lot stronger than you think it was. So I thought that's what we should do today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We should build something. So we're going to build an arched bridge, and we're going to build it out of Sugar cubes! <laughs> so here's what you need. You need some sugar cubes, you need some sandpaper, and you need some modeling clay. So first, you want to make some abutments out of your modeling clay. What is an abutment, you ask? It is this! They distribute the force laterally from one side or the other. I like to use this. This is half a roll of duct tape, and so it fits in just like that, and you see, it's a perfect arch. If you just take sugar cubes and you try to stack them into an arch, it's not going to work because the sugar cubes may not even fit all together, and you can see only the bottoms are touching. I take up the guide and it all falls apart. So here's what you do. You take your sandpaper and you change the squares into trapezoids, and you start sanding down your sugar cubes into trapezoids. Basically, you want one small side and one long side. Thin at the top, wide at the bottom. Or wide at the top, thin at the bottom. It's a trapezoid no matter which way you hold it. Put it on the bridge and see. And as you go, you will see if you're doing it right, there will be no gaps. If you go to the Science Max website, there will be a guide that you can use to help you make the sugar cube bridge. So you don't have to spend as long as I did making this one. And then the most important part is the keystone. That's the one that fits in right at the top, just like that. And when it does, you can take away the guide and it stays up. Isn't that cool? It stays up without any glue, without any mortar, all based on the shape of these sugar cubes. The cool thing is, it'll hold the weight of a whole car, provided you have a very, very small car. The reason why it works is because the weight is distributed along the arch into the abutments and down into the ground. That's what makes an arch bridge so strong. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna max out an arch bridge. So I think I'm gonna need some help, though. Uh, maybe Sonia from the Ontario Science Center. She really knows her stuff. Um, yeah, I'll go there and I'll see if she's busy. All right, come on, let's go. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Phil, how's it going? It's going good. I was wondering if you could give me a hand with something. Okay, what's I'm, up? I'm building, um, well, it's actually, it's easier if I show you. All right. Do you mind coming back to Science Max headquarters? We can take the portal. But that thing doesn't always work. Oh, it is fine. Well, I mean, that worked just fine. Uh-oh, it usually makes a beeping when I do, oh. It's out of batteries. Oh, I told myself, Phil, charge the, charge the remote before you leave the lab, and then I... Where have you been? The, 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 the remote ran out of batteries, so I had to run the last three kilometers. Because right. I made it. Long story. So the sugar cube bridge, you had a chance to look at it, right? Uh -huh. This works on any scale, mm -hmm. right? It should, any no matter scale. what size arch, it should be the same, right? Definitely. Good. Because what I want to do is use these abutments, but go to these abutments. Oh. So I'm going to start the bridge here, and I've already created a thing that to we can use to put the support the sugar cubes on as we go up so that we can make sure that it becomes now, a perfect arch. Yeah. Do we have enough sugar for this? Yep. I got tons of sugar. Wow. Yeah. So I think we're going to need some glue because it's going to be really hard to get these to stay. Yep. To stay, stay right on. 
there without a little bit of glue. We're gonna make a giant arch, maybe some walls, and, and we'll see what happens. Let's do it. Oops, uh, an egg. Now you might think of eggs as kind of flimsy and they do break pretty easily, but eggs, <laughs> eggs are actually stronger than you think. It's because they're, well, egg shaped. You see, the top of the egg is like a little bit of an arch and the bottom of the egg is also like an arch and arches distribute the weight just like they do in a bridge. Here's how you can experiment with how strong eggs are. First, you wanna get a pair of gloves to protect your hands from the shell just in case anything goes wrong. You should also tell an adult that you're doing this experiment because if it does go wrong, you're gonna have some mess to explain. And also, you should probably put on some safety glasses. Now here's what you do. Take your egg and carefully put it in your palm just like that. And put it against your other palm and you're gonna push in directly on either side of the egg. Start pushing harder and harder. You can even lace your fingers and press even harder. And if you do it right, the egg won't break. Pretty amazing, right? So just how much weight does an egg hold? Can one egg support my entire weight. Let's find out. I'm gonna lift my weight up like this and lower myself down. And no, cannot hold my weight. Can my weight be supported by two eggs? Oh, nope. Phil's weight, four eggs. <laughs> Oh, I thought they were gonna do it. Nope. My weight on eight eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> My weight can be supported by just eight eggs. Science! <laughs> Ooh, careful. Sonia and I are on a quest to make a maxed out sugar cube bridge. The reason why an arch works is because the weight or the load of whatever's on top of the bridge is carried outward along the curve of the arch to the abutments at each end, which carry the load and keep the ends of the bridge from spreading out. No matter what you build your bridge out of, sugar or stone, the science stays the same. Sonia and I are building a much larger bridge out of sugar cubes. We're using glue to help the sugar cubes stay together, just like stone bridges use mortar. And when we're finished, it was pretty impressive. A massive sugar cube bridge, yep. right? High fives for that. The moment of truth comes when we take out the support oh. and... Yeah! yeah. It awesome. works! Awesome. Okay. Nice. Giant yep. sugar cube bridge. So do you think it'll hold some weight? I think it definitely should, because right now we have an arch, mm -hmm. perfect arch, and the weight is being distributed to the sides of the base, so. So that's what it's for, right? It's, we can put weight on there? We can definitely put some weight. One to start? Let's start off with one. Okay. And let's see how it goes. All right. Here we go. All right. Yeah, one book, yeah. All right, Sugar Cube Bridge. One book. Two books. Are you nervous? Yeah! <laughs> sugar, books. Sugar Cube Bridge, three books. Three books. Oh, that was great. It, it held up three books. Three. Well, technically it held up two books and broke on the third. So it's kind of still far from how much weight we want to hold because we want to cross it. We definitely want to cross it, so that means we need something bigger and stronger. The cube yeah, works. You're right, because the cubes are great because that keeps the science the same. Yep. Right? So something cubular. The milk crate, really? Definitely, I think we should use those. It's a cube. It is a cube. A whole bunch of milk crates and we'll see what we can do. I think that sounds great. Awesome. Whoa. This is a Prince Rupert's drop. It's a piece of glass that has a long snaky tail and a bulb at one end. So what's so interesting about a glass tadpole? Well, 
I'll show you. And remember, this is just glass. Oh, Prince Rupert's drops are very strong, almost as strong as steel. It's all in how they're made. Molten glass is dropped into cold water. What happens is the outer part of the drop cools off first, leaving the inner part still hot. When the inner part eventually cools, it contracts, pulling everything in tighter and tighter, keeping it under a lot of tension. And because it's round, the force you put on it is distributed all the way around, just like the force is distributed on an arched bridge. Until you get to the tail, just the tiniest break in the tail, and it explodes. All that energy is released in a chain reaction. Why it's so strong you can hammer on one end, but explodes when you break the other, puzzled scientists for centuries. But now we know it's all in how it's made. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic and you will be granted entry. Send in the next applicant. <laughs> okay, don't let them see you. Don't let them see you. Okay, magic smoke. And here we go, big entrance. Behold it is I, Overwhelmo. You again. I only have to demonstrate magic one time and you have to let me into the Wizard Academy. And last, last time does not count. So prepare for your mind to be boggled and your eyes to also be boggled because I shall do a trick. I will just get to it. Here is a book, behold! And now, feast your stupefaction as I produce another book, ha ha! And then, two or three more times, behold, as I put, as I, that's good, behold! And now, look upon the wonderment as I stack these books on top of each other, like this. And now, feast more stupefaction as I, I cleverly move the books off the table. And now, now comes the magic word. Now, I say the magic word. The magic word! And behold, the book is levitating. It is completely off the table. I have done it. Magic. No. No? Not magic, that's science. But the book is levitating. No. Look, at it's not even touching the table. No, it's being supported by the books below because of the center of mass. Preposterous. I'm afraid it's very posterous. Each book is balanced on the one below in a way that the center of mass is behind the edge of the book below. And the entire stack's center of mass is behind the edge of the table. So it may look like magic, but it's science. So... I can't get into the Wizard Academy? No, I'm afraid not. I, uh, good... Alakazam! You will rule the day that Overwhelmo did not I will return, and then you will see. Oh, ow. Sony and I made a large bridge out of sugar cubes, and it didn't hold much weight. So now we're gonna try making another arch bridge, but instead of sugar cubes, we're gonna use milk crates. There we go. I've made some abutments out of giant crates, and this is where we're gonna start our bridge, and they start there, and it goes in a big arch, but we're gonna be using. I brought milk crates. Milk crates, high fives, Woo! high fives. So we start our bridge. This is a straight line, it's not, a, it's not an arch. It's not an arch. But it's clear we have a problem. Okay, ready? Oh! That didn't work, Phil. <laughs> we're like, it's like we're back to the beginning again. So this is like two straight lines. Yeah, two it's, straight lines, it's yep. It's like a triangle. We need an arch, so we're gonna need a support. Sony and I build a support to help us make a curve the milk crates can follow. But after we finish stacking, there's a problem. It doesn't look very solid. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Here. Oh, yeah. Because everything is, there's a gap at the top of all of them. Look, that one, there's a gap. There's a gap there. There's a big there's a one here. It's well, not I mean, making our bridge very solid. There's only one way to find out for sure. You can try it. Is to pull this out and see if it stands up. Let's do it. Okay. So, didn't stay up. Didn't stay up. Okay. That's all right, though. I'm not sure 
why it isn't staying up. Like, the sugar cubes were cubes. Mm -hmm, that's a cube. Milk crates are cubes. But we did change the shape of the cube. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you remember, when I first built my sugar cube bridge, it didn't work with cubes. You have to sand the cubes down to make them into trapezoids. You can't build a perfect arch out of cubes. So they were tall, wider here, and then narrower there so that they had... Oh, so that's the problem. Yep. So I could, like, cut it? I could cut it. I could cut it. You could. You could. I could cut it. That's take a long time, though. If we cut the milk crates into trapezoids, everything will work, right? Right? We take a milk crate, and with the right safety gear, we cut it so we can reshape it into a trapezoid. Good. And it works, but... It's gonna take a long time, isn't it? Definitely. So uh. how about this? I have an idea. So remember when we did the experiment and we had lots of V gaps? Yeah. How about we put some wooden wedges into those gaps to make it one secure structure? So they, it was sitting like this. Exactly. So what we're gonna do is insert wooden pieces right here so we'll fill those gaps. I and get it. And make it one secure structure. Ah, instead of cutting all of our milk crates, we can keep the milk crates. Yep. And they can be solid and we just add to it rather than take Taken away. Taken away, exactly. That is a smart idea. Okay, so let's make some wedges. All right. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let me guess, you want to build a strong structure, something that'll stand the test of time. Well, you know you gotta use the right kind of shapes. Look at this, a square. Now squares have gotta be strong, right? Well, maybe. Maybe if you press straight down on it, but watch as I push to the side. Oh no, the thing that I have built is now collapsing because squares aren't in fact strong after all. If only I had listened to Sal's sage advice. Yeah. Squares aren't gonna cut it. Fortunately, there's a shape that's strong in all kinds of ways. A triangle. Okay, so you heard of triangles before, good for you. But look at this. You can push down from the top and it doesn't move, or you can push from the side and it doesn't move. Triangles are awfully pointy. How do I build with them? Observe, ha <laughs> ha. Triangle here, triangle there, platform on top. And watch. <clears throat> No matter how I try to shift it, it stays solid. And check this out. Triangle here, second triangle there, and a third triangle shape here. That's like three triangles for the price of two. Huh? That's a good deal. So there you have it. The triangle. One of the greatest shapes to build with. This is a house of cards, and if you've never built a house of cards, you should definitely try. Try, because it's not easy. What you need to do is you need to make triangles with the cards. If you do it just right, ha ha, they'll stay up. Then you take another pair of cards, like that, and you take another card, and you put it on top. Ah, and it stays up. Keep on building by making triangles and putting another card across the top like a roof. Then, when you're ready, you can start to make a second layer. It takes a lot of patience to make a house of cards. But with enough patience and really steady hands, you might be able to finish it. There we go. Ha ha, a house of cards. Now, let's max it out. Shh, backing away slowly. Backing away slowly. To build our maxed out card house, the Science Max build team and I used large pieces of foam insulation, which were super light and easy to work with. Once we set up the first layer, we needed to bring in a scissor lift so we could keep building the next layers. By the time we got to the top, our card house was 10 meters tall. Yeah, giant house of cards. And now that I've built a giant house of cards, what do I do with it? I knock it down. <laughs> Science! I'm gonna build it again. Sonia and I are rebuilding our milk crate bridge. Since cubes don't work if you're trying to make an arch and changing the shape of each milk crate would take too long, we're using wooden wedges to fill the gaps at the top of the milk crates. 
Once we get the wedges in, the milk crates have support at their tops and they make a perfect arch. Are you ready? I'm ready. All we have to do is pull the wooden thing out and if it holds up on its own, we've done it. We pull out the support and... It stands! It works! The bridge supports itself! Now it's time for the final test. We try to walk on this bridge. So we spent some time making sure our bridge was safe. We added a crash mat and... We built a second arch. We sure did. So that it's a little bit wider and it feels very solid. So the only thing to do now is to test it. Test it out! You gonna do it? I absolutely will. All right. Absolutely. Sonia puts on a helmet and gives it a try. And sure enough, it works! Yeah! yeah. Milk Crate Bridge! 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 Woohoohoohoo! Science Max experiments at large! Milk Crate Bridge! Yeah. for science! High five! High five! High five. Uh, try yours. What makes airplanes, or basketballs, or people fly? It's air! As well as a bunch of other things that we learn when we try to make a giant paper airplane. So, that didn't work. All on this episode of Science Max, Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Today, we're going to be looking at air. I know, it's, it's kind of hard to look at air because it's, well, it's invisible. But we can look at something that uses air to move. That's right, paper airplanes! Ha ha! Ha ha! Look out! Woohoo! Believe it or not, you can learn all kinds of science from paper airplanes. So let's build some. We are going to do a paper airplane which actually holds the Guinness World Record for the longest paper airplane flight. Pretty cool, huh? First, you fold the paper in half like this, but then you open it back up again, and then you fold in the corners like this. Now, don't worry if this is really, really fast because you have all the instructions on our website. Then you can fold the paper down like this, make sure it's about two centimeters from the bottom, where the point is there, and then you fold the corners in just like you did before. But these ones are just guide folds. We use guide folds to help us fold other folds, basically. Now, we fold again using the guide fold lines you just made. And I would like to call this fold the shirt collar fold because it sort of looks like a shirt collar when you fold it. Now, we fold again on the fold that you made before. Folds in like that, and in like that. And now we fold the point down to touch the edges right like that. And this is a guide fold, so do it very strong. Unfold it. Now you fold it in half like this. And see that guide fold line that we made there? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tip and you're gonna fold it in to touch the guide fold line like that. And this is also a guide. And open it up. And here's the trickiest part. See how it's bent like that? Push it open like this. And this is called a pocket fold because you want to make a little pocket and push it up against there. Fold it flat like this. Fold this tip down over there like that. Then fold it around the back side. Then fold the wings down like this and like this. And here's the extra special bit. We're going to use some stabilizers on this plane. Fold up the stabilizers on the ends of the wings, and ta-da, the Sky King paper airplane fold. Now, as science maximites, you know that there's lots of ways you can learn how to fold paper airplanes. Get an adult and look up paper airplane designs on the internet, or take a book out of the library on how to fold paper airplanes. And of course, this isn't Science Max experiments at large if we don't max it out. So that's right, we're gonna make a giant paper airplane. I'm going to the Ontario Science Center to do just that. Uh-oh. That's never good. Whoa! No. Phil, I'm so sorry. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay, Justin. I never know where the portal's gonna spit me out. This is the Science Center, right? Well, that's right. In fact, you've landed in our paper airplane laboratory. This is what happens to me, Justin. I make a paper airplane, I fold it perfectly, but then it flies like that, or that, or it does that, and I don't know how to fix it. Okay, well, that, that will happen. Mm -hmm. But you know what? There are really only three ways your paper airplane can fly, and I can teach you how to control each and every one of them. Great, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. 
Science Max presents How to Fly Your Paper Airplane. Is your paper airplane spinning around and around? Well, that's what you call roll, chum. Roll is what you call it when any plane moves like this or like this. Here's how to fix it. Bend up the back of one wing to create more lift on one side and it'll balance out. Happy days. Okay, so let me try mine. What's that? Your airplane goes straight up or straight down? Sounds like you have a problem with pitch. Sorry, pitch. Pitch is when your airplane moves like this or like this. To fix it, bend the ends of both wings up if you pitch down or down if you pitch up. Adding a weight to the nose also helps if you've got a problem with high pitch. <coughs> Sorry, high pitch. Great, right. great, you're sure. All right, here we go. Is your plane turning this way or that way? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah is when your plane moves like this or like this. To fix it, bend the back of the plane like the rudder of a boat. Okay, great. Uh, let me try mine. Uh, Not bad. Let me try yours. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. That's what we want. Yeah. You know what? Are you ready to build a giant paper airplane? I think I am. Fantastic. I just need to get one more expert. I will be right back. Cool. Hey, David, how you doing? Hey, good. Good, so David's going for his Master's of Applied Science. In Aerospace Science and Engineering. So you know all about planes. I do. Great. Yeah. So what does this have to do with planes? What is this? So this is a water channel, and it allows us to test airplanes in it before we put them in the sky. Great. We'll have my airplane, and we'll just put it in here, and we'll test it. Please, it's made of paper. Yeah. And in the water, it becomes soggy. Well, well, how do we test our paper airplane if we can't put it in the water? Well, this is a, a, a classic uh, airfoil shape. Yes. Now, is that what you call it, airfoil? An airfoil, yeah. So the cross-sectional shape of a wing is called an airfoil. OK. Uh, and that's what generates the lift. Fortunately, air and, and water are both fluids, so they behave in the same way. I can push ink into the water, and that's going to allow us to see how the fluid flows over the aircraft. So if you tilt its nose up a little bit, you'll be able to see that the shape of the airfoil is actually pushing the water downwards. Oh, yeah, you're and right. The, the ink doesn't go straight. It goes, it yeah, follows the it wing follows down. It follows the shape of the wing down, and we have a lower pressure on the top of the wing and a higher pressure on the bottom of the wing, which pushes it upwards. Right, generating and that, lift. that creates lift. Exactly. So do you, you guys use this all the time in, in aerospace? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty Absolutely. neat. Absolutely. So uh, are you ready to design an even bigger plane, a giant paper plane? I'm, I'm confident we can do a good job. I am excited about it. Let's do it right now. Uh, the, the big paper's over this way, this way, okay. Here's the plan. Take a giant piece of paper and fold the exact same airplane we did in the lab. The small one flew, the large one should too, right? Well, let's find out. I believe we are ready to make our giant paper airplane. All we need is a giant piece of paper! Yeah! Okay, be very careful getting off it. Yeah! All right, let's fold it. Uh, nose on that side. Okay. Remember, we're folding the exact fold we did in the lab, only on a larger scale. We have a tape, a tape malfunction down here. But it's a lot harder to do with a giant piece of paper. Fantastic. That's pretty good. Okay. There. Perfect. Yeah. Giant paper airplane. <laughs> this uh, this doesn't look too much like an airplane. No, it's way, way too floppy. Yeah, but I mean, what? Maybe it just. Like, when I throw it, maybe it'll catch the winds, and then the wings will come up like that. Whoa. Uh, yep. Ma yeah. Maybe. Like, you know, I'll just... Uh, give it a try, Phil. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try. Give it a try. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Oh man! I think, I think we can make some improvements. It sort of oh, felt, yeah. it sort of felt like a bed sheet. I feel if I just threw my lab coat, it'd probably look. Let me just see. Okay, ready? Yeah, it looks pretty much the same, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I didn't know this, but when you fold paper that big, it sort of behaves like fabric. 
Yeah, very, very floppy. Very floppy. What if we supported the plane, like we, we put struts or something in it, like, um, like this stick. If we put it on the wings, it'll stop it from being so floppy. Right, right? and you right. can tape it on. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. We need, we need bigger, bigger sticks. Yeah, really lightweight. Like, so uh, uh, like, foam? Yeah, uh, and uh, like hollow tubes. Hollow tubes, hollow good. Tubes. Over. Good. So we'll, we'll put a whole bunch on there, we'll tape them on so that it doesn't flop around. Yeah. And we'll try to get Yeah. 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 Okay, great, let's go. All right. Bernoulli's theorem states that faster moving air has lower pressure than slower moving air. You can demonstrate this yourself with a ping pong ball and a hair dryer. You put the ping pong ball on the stream of air from the hair dryer, and because it's moving quickly, it has lower pressure than the air around it. So the low pressure air works sort of like a force field, and you can defy gravity with your floating ping pong ball. Awesome! But of course, this is Science Max experiments at large, so we have to max it out with a giant hair dryer and a giant ping pong ball. Sorry, I said science! You probably couldn't hear me because of that. So, our giant paper airplane turned out to be really floppy. When paper is that large, it doesn't hold together very well. What we're going to do is take foam and long sticks and tape it to the large paper airplane wherever we need to give it support. So, here, and here, here, and a bunch there, and maybe some over there. Well, it turned out we needed to reinforce in a lot of places. Put that in there, and then that. Great, look at that. It's not even flopping around. It stands under its own weight. Huh? There's a there's a whole bunch of stuff on it. I don't know if it's gonna fly so well. Oh, it's it's gonna it's gonna be. Well, I mean, I have to put the stuff on it so it doesn't it doesn't flop around. But it's, there's like really a lot of stuff. Well, I needed this foam to reinforce this foam, and then I needed the cardboard to reinforce both of those. Phil, there's a giant hole in the wing. Well, uh, I can fix that. Just get, move your head, and then I'll just. Phil, there's a lot of stuff on here. There, but like it's really a lot. Problem solved. Guys, let's just fly it. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, well, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. All right, uh, okay. all right, here we go. Maiden voyage of the Mark II giant paper airplane. Right. Uh, okay, here we go. One, two, three. Whoa. So it went about three feet. So that didn't work. I told you, too much stuff. You did, he, he told me that. He, he did, did. He, said, he said that. He said that. What we need is something that's stiffer uh, without as much as much stuff on it. But the paper, it's too floppy, so you have to put the stuff on. Right. How about some cardboard? Cardboard's nice and stiff, and technically it's paper. You're right, cardboard. Let's cardboard. make it out of cardboard. Yeah. Cardboard, cardboard. all right. Oh, yeah, it's over here. Tornadoes are giant weather systems that cause the air to go around and around. Tornadoes can be pretty dangerous, but they don't happen that often. Here's how you can make your own small pet tornado you can play with at home. Because air and water behave similarly, we can make a water tornado. You spin it around, get it going, and ta-da, your very own pet tornado. Here's how you do it. You take two two-liter plastic bottles and fill one with water and some blue food coloring, is what I like to do, and then Tape the mouths of the bottles together. You might need an adult to help you with this because you want to make sure the bottles are perfectly aligned. Then flip it over, spin it around to get it going, and voila, your very own pet tornado. Awesome. And now we're going to max it out with a giant tornado chamber. Hey, Michaela. Hey. So this is your giant tornado, it's amazing. Yeah. So I made one with uh, plastic bottles and water, cool. but this one uses air, just like real tornadoes do in the wild. That's right. So how does this work? <laughs> well, um, here we have a platform 
platform, but underneath that there's a fog machine that's pushing the fog up. And we've created an updraft because there is a fan at the top that's pushing air out of the top. And also we're trying to mimic the intense winds you'd get from a tornado with these pillars that are shooting out air in this direction. So it goes around in a circle. Yeah, in real life, uh, tornadoes are pretty rare. You need a perfect set of conditions to see them. You need warm, humid air and cold, dry air. And as well, some intense winds that you usually get from thunderstorms. Science! If I was to drop this light basketball and this heavy workout ball at the same time, which do you think will hit the ground first? Let's find out. They landed at the same time. That's because everything falls at the same rate. It doesn't matter how heavy or how light something is. Until things are falling fast enough that air friction or drag starts to play a factor. Soon, things reach their top speed. This top speed is called terminal velocity. It means I could throw this basketball from an airplane and it might not be going any faster than if I threw it from, say, 10 stories up. I'm gonna find out what the terminal velocity is for both of these objects when we max this out. Ninja science roll! Here's how terminal velocity works. Everything falls at the same rate, going faster as gravity pulls it down. But when things start going so fast that just pushing through the air at that speed creates as much force as the pull of gravity, things reach a top speed and they won't go any faster. How heavy something is and how much air it pushes both play a factor in its top speed. And that top speed is called terminal velocity. How cool is that? I'm in iFly Toronto. This is a giant wind tunnel, and they've got the wind going fast enough that they can't fall any faster. It's the terminal velocity for a human being. I'm gonna take our weighted ball and our basketball and place them both here in the wind chamber. This is the control panel, which is what they use to control the wind speed inside the chamber. And this is Derek, who's gonna be operating it. And that is Mike and Greg, and they're inside the chamber. All right, let's fire it up. All right, firing it up. 35, 58, nothing happening yet. This number here is the one we're looking at to see how fast the air is moving. 86, something's starting to happen. Oh, 89, wind speed of basketball, 89 kilometers an hour. At 89 kilometers per hour, the wind is going fast enough that the friction of the wind and the pull of gravity balance out, making the basketball float. This means you could throw a basketball out of an airplane and it would never go any faster than 89 kilometers per hour. All right, let's keep increasing the speed. 106, 124 kilometers an hour, 140, 150. Oh, 166, almost. 172, whoa. Wind speed of the heavy red ball, 173 kilometers an hour. Because the red ball is heavier than the basketball, we need a lot more wind speed to counteract the force of gravity before they cancel out and the ball floats. Here's something else that's going on that's cool. Mike is flying, but Greg is not. That's because Mike is lying down, which means he's catching a lot more wind than Greg is, who's standing straight. If Mike stays lying down, his terminal velocity is the same as the red ball, 173 kilometers per hour. But Greg's velocity would have to be a lot faster. And that's science! So the giant paper airplane hasn't been working so well. The problem is paper can't hold up its own weight when it's that large. Cardboard is much stronger than paper, so we've decided to rebuild the plane out of cardboard. All right, Phil, host, hoist it up. Then we take it to the roof of the Science Center and see if we can get it to fly. Oh, whoo. There you go, our Mark III model paper airplane. Now I know it's made out of cardboard, but cardboard is technically paper. And it's the only thing strong enough to hold a plane of this size together. We even had to put some poles in so the wings still wouldn't flap. But we're pretty confident this is gonna work. Okay. All right, Phil, we're in position. Now, don't try this at home. 
Our roof has a big wall on the edge. Your roof does not. Our first attempt didn't go so well. Looks like we have a bit too much pitch. Our second attempt still had a bit too much pitch. Time to add some weight to the nose. We added some clips to the front to give it a little bit more weight on the nose, which is important. Although at this point, I kind of wish there was less weight. Uh, whoa, okay, all right. <laughs> Phil, that was great! Woo all right! Woo! This throw worked best, but I know what you're thinking. Why didn't it sail through the air like a normal paper airplane does? Well, that's because the other thing heavy planes need to fly is thrust. So we could put an engine on our plane, but then we'd have to use something stronger than cardboard, and well, pretty soon we'd have an actual plane. But this isn't about making a full-size plane. This is... Largest paper airplane I've ever thrown! Woo! Hey, you guys are great! The plane is great! Thank you very much for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Where were the stairs? Yeah. Oh, never mind, I found them. No, 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 no. This episode of Science Max is all about liquids. Uh. What makes something float or not float? Oh no, my loonies! Liquid density and super absorbent gel. Who wants to do an experiment with diapers? Liquids. Today on Science Max Experiment at Large. Hey, welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. I'm Phil McCordick, and, and hold on a second, I'm just gonna change. Okay, that's better. Now, uh, where were we? All right, let's go make a boat. So you know that some things float and some things sink, like rocks or wood or uh, full water bottles and empty water bottles, or uh, carrots, foam, waffles, screwdriver, playing cards, plasticine, tin foil, potato, my watch. Hmm, wait, that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to go in there. So how, oh. So how do you make a boat? You make it out of something that floats, right? Well, most boats are actually made out of metal. Tin foil is metal and, well, it sinks. But if you fold tin foil into a boat shape, it floats. And boats don't only float themselves, but they can hold people and cargo. In fact, there's container ships crossing the ocean at this very moment that are holding thousands of tons of cargo, and they're all made of metal, which doesn't float, it sinks. So how do boats do it? Are they magic? No, of course not. Boats are science. And here, you can be science maximites. Get some tin foil and cut it into the same size pieces and fold a couple different shapes of boats and see which one can hold the most weight before sinking. And now it's time to max it out. But before we do, here's how you can fold your own tin foil boat in less than 15 seconds. First, take a square piece of tin foil, then fold it in half. Fold one corner down and the other corner down. Then open it up and ta-da, you're done. If you want instructions on how to fold a more complicated boat, go to our website. I have a feeling I'm gonna need a few extra lab coats for this experiment. Like I was saying, let's max out the tinfoil boat and find out a little bit more about why boats float. I was gonna come in over there, but I, I came in on the water slide. I, I think I had the coordinates wrong. 
Anyway, this is Huthia, and she's from Let's Talk Science, which is all about science education, right? Yes. Just like us. So you're gonna help me max out the tinfoil boat. I think I dropped it in the water. Hold on. Whoa! Boat. The tin foil boat. Phil, this is a boat. Well, it looked a lot better before I came down the water slide, but that's the idea. And then we make it bigger. What do you think? Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. Oh uh, well, why not? Tin foil is very thin, uh -huh. and it might not hold the shape of the boat. Well, I still think we should use tin foil though. Why? Well, because the small experiment was tin foil, and I bought all of this tin foil. Then let's do it. Tin foil? Tinfoil? Okay, high five. I will, um, I'll take the tin foil and you take that and um, I'm gonna have to dry off at some point. Welcome to shipbuilding for pirates. I'm Swabby and I've built some of the finest pirate ships for some of the finest pirates this side of the Caribbean. And I can teach you to do the same. But first, you need to know your basics. Mass and volume. Let's start with volume! <laughs> but not that kind of volume. Which of these two chests do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Which of these two balloons do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Volume is how much space something takes up. Which of these two chests has more volume? Hmm? That's right, they're the same. But which of these two chests has more mass? Which is heavier? Hmm, hard to tell, isn't it? But what if I told you that this one was empty and this one was full of treasure? Oh, ho, 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 ho. loonies. Now, which one has more mass? Hmm, that's right, this one. These two chests have the same volume, but this one has more mass. This chest has more volume than that one, but this one, my loonies, that chest does not have as much mass. Volume is how much space something takes up, and mass is how heavy something is. And when you look at them both together, you're looking at density. Join us next time on Shipbuilding for Pirates, and then we'll look at how volume, mass, and density work together to make something float. Oh, my precious, precious loonies. Are you all right, my pretties? They can't talk, so I'm not sure what they're saying. So, Husni and I get to work constructing a large tinfoil boat. Our first design is just sort of a square, folded together out of a very large sheet of tinfoil. Simple, but can I ride in it? <laughs> there we go. A giant tinfoil boat, just my size. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work. Uh, it's too thin. You, th you think it's too thin? I feel like yes. Well, what should we do? Do you want to test it? Let's test it. Yeah. Okay, good idea. So here's here's the most important question. Do you want to test it or should I test it? No, no, no. You test it. All right, here we go. Putting it in. First test. Does it float on its own? Yeah! Floats on its own, no problem. If I just get in very carefully, then it will work fine. See, if, I, if I'm if i oh. careful about oh. how oh. I get in, no, it's, oh. it's fine. See, if I just get in like that. Oh my God! Bill, Bill, are you okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's sort of, it's sort of, no, that's just air. You know what went wrong? It wasn't boat shaped. I think if we make it look more like a canoe, because canoes float, if we make it look like a canoe, it'll work great. No, 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 Phil. We need some support. If we add a couple of structures in between, then we add support to it. I'll tell you what. Let's make a boat like I want to make and a boat like you want to make, and we'll see whose is the best. That's a good idea. OK, let's do that. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby, and now we know what volume means, what mass means, and that together it can tell you something's density. Now let's find out why things float. Let's... Let's say we're out to sea and my treasure chest gets swept overboard. Oh, no! But it's all right. It floats. 
because it pushes enough water out of the way, displaces it to carry its mass. But what if my treasure chest had more treasure in it? Well, we're giving it more mass, but not more volume. Too much mass and not enough volume, and it will sink. Oh, no! My loonies! You need more volume if you want to float more mass. And that is why things float. I'm Swabby, and thanks for joining me on Shipbuilding for Pirates. So, the first version of the tinfoil boat didn't work out too well. Like that. Oh. But my idea is to build a tinfoil boat more like a canoe to see if a different shape makes any difference. Tinfoil canoe! Very Canadian. Very Canadian. The canoe part, anyway. I don't know about the tinfoil part. So, Husni and I had a bit of a disagreement at why the last boat didn't work. I thought it was because it wasn't shaped enough like a boat, so this one looks like a canoe. What I thought is that it requires some structure. Structure so that it wouldn't fold together. That's right. And we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, here we go. Mm. 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 Did it work? No. OK, your idea next. Did you know it's easier to float in salt water, like in the ocean, than it is in fresh water, like a lake or a pool? That's because not all liquids are created equal. They have different densities. This is fresh water, or it doesn't have anything in it. And this is sugar. If I was to put one scoop of sugar in this water and stir it around until it dissolves, now this liquid is more dense than before I put the sugar in. Here's an experiment you can do at home using liquid density. This glass just has regular water with yellow food coloring in it. This glass, green food coloring, and half a cup of sugar in it. This one has a full cup of sugar in it, and this one has two cups of sugar in it. Now, when you do this at home, you'll definitely want an adult to help you because you have to heat the water if you want to dissolve that much sugar in one glass of water. I'm going to put them all in one container. You can do this at home, and when you do, I suggest you use a very small container because you have to be very careful when you put the layers in. You can use a turkey baster or a straw. When you put your finger on top, the air pressure will hold the liquid in, and you can just drop it in. But these kind of take some time, so I'm going to use the syringe of science. I'm going to use the most dense liquid first because that's the one that's going to want to be on the bottom. I carefully put it on the bottom of the container. The next layer, be very careful. And you'll see that the red and the blue aren't mixing because they have different densities. The blue is heavier than the red. We'll add the green, and you can see even when it drips into the red, it comes back up to the top because the green liquid isn't as dense as the red liquid. And the denser liquids push the lighter liquid up. And now we're gonna add the yellow, which of course has no sugar in it at all. And there you go. All the layers stay separate. If you put it on a light, you can really see it. Liquid densities. Now, let's max it out. Ta-da! the longest length of liquid layers. 12 liquids all organized by density. Starting from the bottom, we have honey, corn syrup, chocolate syrup, maple syrup, dish soap, whole milk, water, dyed blue, vegetable oil, extra virgin olive oil, rubbing alcohol, baby oil, and lamp oil. Liquid density. I really, really want to mix it up, but it took me a long time to make this, so I'm not going to. Our first two attempts at a tinfoil boat haven't gone so well. Husnia's idea is to make a tinfoil boat and add some more structure, because the tinfoil just wants to collapse when I get in it. So we start with a large piece of cardboard on the bottom, then we wrap the tinfoil around it and shape it into a boat. After that, we add some supports across the top to stop it from folding in when we add my weight to it. This boat feels a lot stronger than the one I was just in. I told you. So how does all of this work? So we got some support using 
broomsticks, mm -hmm. and then some cardboard paper. And then underneath, we have cardboard. cardboard. And so how will all of this help the boat not sink with me in right. it? Right. The broomsticks will prevent it from folding this way, yeah. and you won't sink. Good. The cardboard will prevent it from folding this way, and you won't sink again. Not sinking is my favorite thing to do in the tinfoil boat. All right, so let's try it. Let's do now, it. Are you going to get in this one? I'll tell you what, Phil. If you get in and you don't sink, I'll go after you. Deal. All right. All right, here we go. Huh? Huh? <laughs> it's sort of working. Oh, no. Oh, no, water's coming in. It's sort of working. It's almost working. <laughs> Another thing I learned is that a very light tinfoil boat can be very heavy when it's full of water. I don't know if fixing it is in the cards. I think we, I think we're gonna have to build another boat. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we should do? Let's add more structure. More structure? Oh yeah. What if we add like a metal rod around the outside and maybe some more metal rods and ribs? And we wrap it all in tinfoil, and you think it'll work? Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Uh, don't worry about it. I've got this. No, I, I'll get it. I'll get it. Sure. Okay. Oh, you. Who wants to do an experiment with diapers? Oh, oh, oh. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. You may have a little brother or sister at home, which means you probably know where you can find some diapers. But there are two things you need to remember. First, ask an adult if you can use the diapers for your experiment. And two, only use unused diapers. Okay? Okay. So, you take the diaper, and if you cut it, be very careful, maybe get an adult to help you, over some black construction paper, like I have here, and you shake the diaper over the construction paper, you'll see that there's a little powder that comes out. And this is the secret ingredient. This is super absorbent gel. What it does is it soaks up all the liquid, and diapers are full of them. And you carefully pour it into a plastic cup, like that. Now, you can see I have already done it with a number of diapers. It's important to use a plastic cup because it's a little messy, although it's non-toxic, it's totally safe, but it's still easier to clean up by just throwing the cup away. Now, add some water, and what happens is this super absorbent gel absorbs the water and turns very quickly into a paste. Look at that. Now, let's max it out. Five kilograms of super absorbent gel, 500 liters of water, now, it is time to do science! <laughs> and I have my own stir stick. <laughs> yep, definitely coming along. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if we're getting anything on this camera, but I want to make sure it's recording. Yep, it's recording. There we go. It is definitely turning solid. Well, there you go. The giant super absorbent gel experiment. Corey, Trevor. Need some help getting out. <laughs> How many outfits have I been through in this episode? <laughs> How many outfits have I been through in this episode? Anybody have a towel? There you go. Thanks, buddy. That's that's great. <laughs> Bosnia's idea of adding structure to the tinfoil boat was definitely right. We just needed to go further. So we did it again. This time, we made a much larger boat. 
We started with a sheet of cardboard, then wrapped the tinfoil around and added some metal supports taped to the cardboard across the boat this way to make ribs, as well as some other supporting pieces in the front and the back. Then another metal rod all the way around the top and finally supports across the middle. All right, feel how strong it is. I'm really excited about this version of the tinfoil boat. What we did is we used thwarts, uh, a big hard pieces of wood that we did last time, but this time we have ribs. Ribs, right, which are made of a cardboard, a metal rod attached to it, and... And shaped, and we did a whole bunch of them in the, go the whole length of the boat. And then we used all of this bendable metal, and we have one that runs all the way around the gunnels, and a whole bunch that run down the inside. And we even used bike fenders at the front and the back of the boat to give it super rigidity so that it hopefully won't go like all the other boats have done so far. Are you ready, Husnia? Let's do this. One, two, three, lift. All right, let me get over. It floats, but that doesn't tell us anything because they've all floated at this point. It's only when I... I get into it. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Hey. Hey, it works. Whoa. All right. Oh, it's working. <laughs> Look at that. It works perfectly. The tinfoil boat experiment has been done. Science Max, experiments at large. What do you think, Christina? The only reason I got into this boat is I knew it's gonna work. Really? Oh, yeah. So you knew you would never get wet? See, I don't think that's fair. I think it's time that you, you, that you got wet. You yeah, I think we should yeah. go. No, no, I think no, you and I should no, just no, get no, wet no. right now. <laughs> just need... Someone help. Whoa. Whoa. You're still dry, aren't you? Okay. That is so unfair. Ha, 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 ha!